Glory to God. There are certain wisdoms. There are certain wisdom from God that comes immediately. There's other wisdoms from God that comes over time. The wisdom that comes immediately It is a gift. You don't have to pursue it to walk in it. I mean, you don't have to endure long periods of time to walk in it. But the wisdom that is progressive, line upon line, precept upon precept, that's the wisdom that takes time. It doesn't come immediately. It comes over, it comes periodically. So there's a period. And then it stops. And then you got to step into the next sentence. And then there's a period. And it stops. And then you got to step into the next sentence. If I be honest with you, children of God don't really falter with immediate wisdom. They falter with progressive wisdom. People get deceived during progressive wisdom. People become lukewarm over progressive wisdom. People lose heart and faint over progressive wisdom. Uh, People miss miracles in progressive wisdom. Progressive wisdom is where people get angry at God. God becomes the enemy during progressive wisdom. In progressive wisdom, Satan will imply his opinion about your life. In progressive wisdom is where the devil talks and speaks words that will create animosity between you and the Holy Spirit. Patience is a divine strategy from God so that you will not miss the progressive wisdom. The wisdom that does not drop in your soul immediately, but has to travel as if it is a FedEx package or a UPS truck. Progressive wisdom has ETAs. Progressive wisdom has ETAs. Progressive wisdom does not drop in your soul immediately. It is transferred. It travels. It must be deposited. Progressive wisdom is what the Lord Jesus used for 30 years. It was progressive wisdom. He started his ministry at 30 because the wisdom was progressive. Progressive wisdom is not a shortcut. It is a divine path that is governed by divine time. Because in the time you will see what you need to see, know what you need to know, and be with who you're supposed to be with. There was disciples that followed Jesus until he said, drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. When he spoke that, 
the Bible said that there were many that walked away from the Lord Jesus. Imagine that. But progressive wisdom is where they walked away. In instant wisdom, they were there. In progressive wisdom, they disappeared. Lot's wife was there in instant wisdom. But progressive wisdom, the Bible says she looks back and she gets consumed and becomes ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The king is killing everybody in the Babylonian system, but Daniel, he steps into progressive wisdom. It doesn't come to him immediately. He has to pray. He can easily get overwhelmed by the murders that are taking place by the king. Because the king is killing people one after the next. People are dying one after the next. But he does not let that bother him. He yields to the progressive wisdom. Progressive wisdom, you have to study to take it. God hides it from you. You're only going to get it if you're hungry. And hunger pursues aggressively. Have you ever felt hunger pains in your belly? When you feel hunger pains in your belly, you start pursuing food. The hunger pains guide you to food. No one has to tell you that you need food. God will show it to you through the signal of hunger. Hunger is so powerful because you don't have to be trained that food is the answer. Hunger in itself links you to the solution of food. Imagine how God place the radar in your soul to let you know when you lack wisdom. What if you never really lacked health so much or lacked money so much? What if you lacked wisdom? Because that's really what it is. Wisdom is the decisions that God wants you to make. The words God wants you to speak. The atmosphere God wants you to create. There's a wisdom for your mind. Wisdom knows which thoughts are supposed to be cast down. And wisdom knows which thoughts are supposed to be casted up. Remember this phrase, exalt divine thinking. Exalt divine thoughts. Do you know how to lift up the thoughts that come from God and let that be magnified in your concentration? I was thinking about it in all these JHM meetings I've had. What I have done is create an atmosphere for you to feel the fire of God. 
So before I pray for you, if I even if I don't pray for you, you just being in the atmosphere, there's angels that's going to speak to you. They're going to talk to you. They're going to conversate with you. Every time I get on Periscope and I talk to you, you receive another level of understanding and revelation. So you start to see in the spirit in a higher realm. You start to see in the spirit at a higher dimension. Your functionality to comprehend the Father becomes superb. Before God multiplies your money, he wants to multiply your mind. If your mind becomes wealthy, so will your finances. How is it when you get a cut, if you don't put a band-aid on the cut, a scab comes on, comes on the cut, and the cut heals over time? How come? God created everything to produce healing. God created the whole earth with recovery atmosphere. The whole earth has recovery atmosphere in it. So every time you inhale, you're receiving an impartation to recover. Oxygen is a symbol for recovery. In the year 2020, there'll be more generals that pass. Going into the year 2020, this year 2020, there'll be more generals that will pass. As Reynard Bonnke passed, there'll be more generals that shall pass. There's a, um, there's a clearing out of a lot of the generals of old. It's not a bad thing. But there'll be more generals that will go in 2020. As Dr. Or Roberts, as Evangelist Billy Graham. And these are all in alignment with God creating order. Death. Is a seed for order. Mankind is in disorder, so Jesus has to die. So that order can occur. Order means that God is organizing afresh. How many of you all know that you can organize a house? It'll get messy again if you live there. You have to recreate order. Order is consecutive. It's not a moment. It's an upkeep. Order is a maintenance. It's the maintenance plan of God. That's why it's so easy for you to stray from order yourself. 
is one of the most easiest things for you to drift from order. God says, I want you to praise me more. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise you. Satan sends a bad report. You forget that conversation. Well, I'm going to do. Lord, I need you to help me. And the Lord looking at you like. Order, order has to be kept through passion. You cannot keep the organization of the father for your life without passion. Passion is going to remind you of the importance of keeping that divine schedule, structure, instruction, format in your life. If you receive instructions, you can receive anything from God. An ambitious person asks God for new seasons. A prosperous person asks God for new instructions. An ambitious person asks God for new seasons. A prosperous person asks God for new instruction. I move God when I'm moving for God. And I cannot move for God until I find out how God wants me to move. Martha was a revelation of servanthood that doesn't have a reward connected to it. Martha showcased servanthood that is still in covenant with the curse. Are your movements in synchrony with God's current wisdom for you? Is it in synchrony? You're talking to that high school friend. Is that high school friend in synchrony with the schedule that the father has for you? One person that's not on God's schedule for you can produce disorder in every other section in your life unknowingly in the month of December the father taught me about telepathic communication in a very heavy way the Lord taught me about telepathic communication how telepathically your thoughts link up with people. That's why you have to be careful of the people you choose to be your conversation partners. Nobody was just an atheist. Their mind synchronized with someone prior to them that believed that there was no God. And I'm going to say this. 
most times people lose their faith that God exists through going to school. Because school teaches the law of evolution. For someone that does not have a household of faith and they hear about evolution, how do I contradict the information that's penetrating me that seems like it's correct? How do I combat what appears to be confirmed? Everyone that you get around, your mind synchronizes with them. I meet strangers all the time and I know what they're thinking. The mind is so powerful. A woman can undress you with her mind. A man can undress you with his mind. There are different places in America. There are more uh, variety of places overseas where men they telepathically communicate with a woman that does not even see them. And through the demonic lures that woman in. Through satanic telepathing. That woman can be on the front of the bus and not even know that man is in the back. And if he is an expert in the satanic telepathing pattern. He'll cast a spell to her mind. Haitian people. I know Haitian people. Haitian people are also experts at telepathy. There are people that are in the depths of Muslim religion. that are experts at telepathic. A psychic hears your future from a satanic angel that knows your future. If you ever receive a psychic reading, there's a depth of witchcraft on your life and demons that follow you that you'll have to be free from. It's very dangerous to be curious for knowledge and not have the composure of the Holy Ghost to direct you. If a psychic speaks into your life, there are millions of demons that have a portal to your path. The word of the Lord says, lay hands on no man suddenly. What does a psychic do? They do palm reading. Because the palm is an area where you release spirits. You have different parts of your body that releases spirits. You have the mouth that releases spirits. 
your sexual organs release spirits. Your sexual organs. For those of you all that's on the slow bus. <laughs> if you are male, it's called a penis. I don't know what's wrong with people. I think that they don't know that it's 2019. I call it a dick. If you are female, it's called a vagina. I don't know why the church world to call it what it is. I don't know why so many people are scared to call. They're scared to call. Wow, mankind is so broken. Now, mind you, and let me just be raw here because I'm dealing with wisdom. If you call a female part a vagina, <laughs> and see, some of you all, I'm, I'm about to check you right now. I'm about to deflect you. Because uh, this, this show you where you at with yours. Because some of y'all like to talk in secret. But then when the man of God come and talk to you now. Uh, <laughs> shut up. Whether you call it a vagina or you call it a pussy. God knows all things. God is up to date with the current terminology that we speak about. So, see, you, you're going to have to become a real person. You know, that's why you see people all the time. They talk. Like how they talk. Then when they go into prayer, oh thou, oh God, that art in heaven. Oh Father, we come before your beloved and your mat. You, you ever, saints, you ever wonder why people be up there talking about in the matchless name of Jesus? Bruh, you don't even mention matchless never. <laughs> Do you even know what matchless even means? But people talk in terms and they're not even real with their self. But it's to appear. God is familiar with the terminology that goes on today. There was a guy that came to me. He said, you got that gas? Now, mind you, I was at a gas station. The Lord had to let me know that the Negro was asking me for weed. Now, it was quite interesting to me that the Lord Jesus knew that the gas was not the gas that I was pitting in the vehicle. That the Lord knows that the gas term is a symbolic phrase for weed. And God talks to men of God according to their proximity to him, their closeness to him, their access to him. So there's some men and women say, God does not talk like that because you, you can't know how he talks if that level is not privileged to you. And that's why God wouldn't talk to you like that because he knows See, God talks to me. He deals with me different. Peter, James, and John. Which one is God talking to the most?
Somebody give me some answers on here. Now I want everybody to think about your answer. Think about your answer. I want to ask you this. Who do you, which disciple? No, nobody answer right now. Everybody stop answering. I want you to think about this. Which disciple does Jesus love? Think about this. Think about this. We can throw James under the bus. <laughs> James, get yourself out of here. Get out of here. Hold on, James. We're going to use you in just a minute, though, because you got some good, you got some good tea. We about to drink some of that tea in the book of James in just a minute. Hold on, James. Hold on, James. I apologize. Imagine who is the disciple that Jesus loves. Now think about this. Now this is a deep answer. But we went out between Peter and who? In the name of Jesus, I pray for establishment for the spirit of mysteries. Wait, 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 before you answer, wait. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of mysteries, that your eyes, uh, the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Now think about this. According to what Jesus said, who is hearing God more? Who the disciple that he loves? Which this disciple was able to lay his head in the bosom of Jesus? Now everybody answer. <laughs> There's some people Some people say I already answered mine I'm sticking with mine Blessed be God <laughs> Just look at the book of Revelation Saints is John Nevertheless that's a mysterious Question that I just asked you So don't think that you out of pocket If you said Peter because Peter, remember, G has had a whole conversation. Do you love me? Feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Go tell Peter and the disciple. So, you know, it's all in there. But if it said that John is the disciple he loved, why would it say that that's the disciple he loved? Don't he love all the disciples? He has favor. Now, I'm going to say something to you that's going to be shocking. John understood about the seed. Because John had, 
he saw the courtroom of heaven and he know the legislation. He know the divine senate. He knows what activates the kingdom of heaven in someone's life on the earth. He knows all those things. He was a sower too. He understood the seed. Remember what did he say in 1 John 3? For his seed remaineth in him. 1 John 3, 9 rather. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. His seed, God, born of God. See, Steve Urkel's spirit, don't grab me again. Don't get, get, get off of me. You see he has a revelation about seed. Huh, you see that? Huh? So he knows about seed. So the seed is, it, it, it was taught to him. And Peter, Peter being the patriarch of that sowing move, God trusted Peter to check Ananias and Sapphira because Peter is the biggest sower. Him and John are both grabbing mantles from the Lord. So it was Peter, it was John, and who else? It was James. And look at the book of James. What did James start talking about? The seed. So these were the three heavyweights. Peter, James, and John, out of, the, out of the 12, they was the heavy hitters. But Peter was leading the pack. John was leading the revelation. That's why you see that John was in the spirit on the what? The Lord's day. And what was the book called? The book of what? Revelation. James had in the book, in his book, he was talking about how a farmer and how you must be patient. Patient, sowing. And of course, he was talking about the coming of the Lord. So, so you just learned something today. That the three of the disciples that had sowing hands, they meaning like they were stewards of their money. It was Peter, it was James, and it was John. So that, that's what, that's, and now you know why Jesus taking them everywhere. But you see, Peter was the biggest sower. You see that? He was the biggest sower. That's why the Lord uses him to check those that's not sowing. Because Peter, he's such a master in the seed that God, like, I know to send you. See, the more you sow, the more authority you have to release judgment. My God. Listen, listen. That's why when you're a sower, God going to judge your children. See, some of, your, some of you parents, you're going to have to catch this. When you're a sower, he going to judge your children. He gonna, if you marry, he going to judge your spouse. And watch this here. S say you married and, and you sowers. And both of y'all got a sowing heart together. That mean y'all fight for each other in that. You see what I'm saying? Um, uh, 
the word of the Lord coming to me right now by Hainsley and um, Zipporah. You know, the father brought this to my attention. He said this to me. And, and the whole of JHM, so this public, it was already public already. Remember before the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, I called out uh, my son Hainsley, and I told you, Hainsley, I said, I said, the, the fact that I'm calling your name out, that means that you, you now are a target. And I said, it's just like Job. When God called Job's name out, and I, I said, I noticed that uh, not everybody, but in my lifetime of ministry, most times when I called somebody's name out, they would lose the fight to the devil. You see what I'm saying? Not everybody. <laughs> I'd be nice to some of y'all. That's why I don't call your name out because you ain't strong enough yet. <laughs> you might think you strong. You might think that you strong. You might think you strong. But I was telling Hainsley, my son, that when I called his name out, it meant that he was going to become a target. I told him he would overcome, even going into the meeting. What Hainsley have done is Hainsley has obeyed the Holy Ghost thus far. In this trial. Saints. Let me give you a secret. Everybody's life has a trial. And your life. You, you keep on going to court. And sometimes you may not even know. That you keep on going to court. But that's why you feel a strangeness. In your atmosphere. That's why you feel an awkwardness. Like you, you might be in the same place. But something is different here. Something unusual is taking place here because you go into court in the spirit realm. Now watch this. If you win in the courtroom, there's a compensation that hits your life. I know because I receive mines and I constantly receive mines. So I'm not a, I'm not a, a spectator about this. Like this my whole life. I know how this roll. I know how this operate. And if you win the court case, there's a compensation, a harvest that the father rewards you with that when he rules in the court case, the accuser, the brethren can't say nothing. So watch this here. The way that the saint wins in the court case. I talked to you about the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony, but let me di dissect this and teach this for your understanding's sake. Consistency. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Forgiveness. Because I promise you that when you in the when your life is in a trial or uh, the trial session in the court session, there's gonna be things that's gonna happen, and I promise you, I promise you, you're gonna get wronged. Here's what I'm hearing the Lord say. Sometimes people can see you coming up financially and the Lord will tell them, I want you to invest. I want you to invest. I want you to bless. I want you to bless. And they say, no, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. Nah, they're they going to have more than me. Because they're looking at you rise up and they're not there yet. But you rising up because you're listening to God. And so watch this here. 
your subconscious mind know that something happening. Your natural mind might not catch it, but your subconscious mind, that's the hidden side of you that God has programmed to detect things. That's where conviction flows and um, that's where God communicates signals. Remember, I talk about prophetic signals. Your subconscious mind will sense something in the room and out of your subconscious mind, the Holy Spirit will quicken you. I forgive those that trespass against me. The Lord's Prayer. That's a courtroom decree. You see? It's a courtroom declaration. See, the Lord's Prayer is more than just the Lord's Prayer. It's, it's for the courtroom. Our Father who art in heaven. The same way you say, your honor. You see that? The same way you go before the judge and say, your honor. Look how our father starts out. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. You see, you acknowledging the judge. Thy kingdom come. See, this is a king. This is a judge. Thy will be done. See, the, the judge got a will concerning the case. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, he on the, he on the throne right now with all power. And you got all power of attorney in the name of Jesus. See, the whole Lord's Prayer is courtroom vocabulary. Wow. So when you pray the Lord's Prayer, you tell the Lord, I'm clearing myself out so that in the courtroom, I can be found not guilty and I can win the case, the compensation, the harvest, the abundant life, the blessing and benefits of the kingdom would be released to me. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Watch. There is a day anointing. That is saturated with bread. There is a daytime. Remember the Bible say, I'll command my loving kindness in the daytime. The Lord will command his loving kindness. Psalm 42. I just did a, a text on that yesterday. The angels of loving kindness. Give us this day our daily bread. What did the ravens feed Elijah? Fish and bread or meat and bread, whatever, they, whatever you say. Give us this day. So God has to give you the day within your day. My God. See, everybody lives in a day. But there is a day that the Father gives to you when you are son. Ho! Oh! Oh! Ho! There's a day that the Father gives to you when you his daughter. And this day is higher than the day that everybody else is in. Look what the word of God say. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. Oh, so, so even though people are in the day, if they don't belong to God, the day is evil. So that means that the day will have satanic presence dominating it is contrary to the good plan that God has 
So when you're praying the Lord's Prayer, you're telling the Lord, give us this day. Where's this day? This day is in the throne of God, is in his power. His wealth is covered in this day. Prosperity. Deliverance. Perfection. Protection. So, God handing you a scroll for the day. Where his bread is dominating that day. The bread is dominating all the other reports, systems, kingdoms, incomes, results, diagnosis that you heard. My God. What, what, what did the Lord tell the Sanfranician woman? He told her, I cannot give the children's bread to dogs. She didn't go to the Lord for money. So, so the bread got various different functionalities. The bread is dealing with the whole covenant, the whole package, the whole beneficial system. And you are a recipient. So when it said, give us this day, our daily bread, every bread, the bread of health, the bread of deliverance, the bread of joy, the bread of strength, the bread of peace of mind, the bread of soundness of mind, the bread of wisdom, the bread of Liberty, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Saints, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So what is the differentiating factor with this text? It's telling you that when the spirit of the Lord is, liberty is surrounding you. So there's not going to be no urges for you to go back into bondage. Because liberty, the angel of liberty is all around you. The anointing of liberty all around you, my God. If you go over here, liberty right there. So, so you're not being oppressed to backslide. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So, so when the spirit of the Lord is with you, you, go, you look over there, there's liberty. You look over there, there's liberty. You hedged in with liberty windows. Imagine you inside of a car. And the windows, you looking out the windows. Well, well, God put you in a vehicle called grace. And you got liberty windows. When you look at that window, you're not looking to go back to sin. Because that window is full of liberty. You ever saw tinted windows? Tinted windows is when the windows get dark. If they've got dark windows called tinted windows, blessed be God, they got light windows which represent liberty and justice for all. They got liberty windows. I'm looking out liberty windows. Watch this here. I'm hearing the Lord say that when you're born again and your soul is renewed, you looking out the heaven windows. Heaven's windows, the heavenly windows. I open up the windows of heaven. See, remember you seated in the heavenly places in Christ. So when he opened up the windows of heaven, it's not like he opened up windows that you on earth. No, you're not on earth. Your body on earth. Your spirit in heaven. So when he opened up those windows, your spirit see those. Ah! So when you're walking in the spirit. Ho! 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 ho. So when you're walking in the spirit, your soul come into sync 
with the windows that your spirit can see in the heavenly places. And when your soul adapts to this, now your body starts flowing in the supernatural. And once your body flowing in the supernatural, everything that's in the natural realm, just like your body, got to synchronize with your spirit. <sighs> see, 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 see that. That's how, ah, that's how, that's how money come and work. That's how finances work. Because everything in the natural realm is synchronizing with the spirit realm that you're dominating in. How Jesus got those, those, those fish and that bread. He ain't go to the market. He went to the storehouse in heaven, praise God. And there was supernatural fish. There was supernatural bread. But because his spirit was up there in the storehouse. And he trained his soul. To submit to his spirit. And he trained his body. To submit to his spirit. Now he was able to take. The five loaves and two fish. And the Bible said he lifted it up. What is he doing? He lifted it up into the storehouse. Supernaturally. He give. Watch this here. When he's sewing that thing up. He giving it to the father. And then he gave thanks. Why? Because thanksgiving is what you do when you're in the heavenly realm. The Bible said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So Jesus was going through the gates and the gates had wealth gates. Isaiah 60 verse 11, it had the wealth gates. He had the wealth, oh my God. He had the wealth gates moving, moving on those five loaves and two yeah, he was in the wealth. Oh my God. He was in the wealth cage to Thanksgiving. Every time you thank God, you step into the wealth gates. Every time you give God thanks, you enter into his gates with Thanksgiving. So I got access to all the gates of God. The wealth gates, the abundance gates, the gates of plenty. I got access to those gates through Thanksgiving. And then watch what it say. Enter into his courts with praise. That's where the Lord make verdicts in the realm of the spirit. That's why Paul and Silas couldn't stay in there. Because when they started praising God, they stepped, they stepped into the heavenly judicial system. And the heavenly judicial system said that they were not supposed to be in prison, not supposed to be in jail. And they got right out of there. Saints, if all this works, how much more when you use this for your financial situation, how much more money going to be released to you? And it's beyond this natural system. It's beyond this natural world because you're moving with a supernatural economy, a supernatural account, a supernatural transference from God. And the natural realm got to submit itself to your dominion as a son of God. All creation is crying out for the manifestation of the Son. All creation is crying out. Why? Because they waited for you to create. The devil been creating stuff on the creation that is of the curse, that is of failure and defeat and darkness and wickedness and slavery and toil and bondage. It's time for you to release out of the sonship anointing what's supposed to be in creation. My money in creation. My health is in creation. All healing in my body is in creation. All financial abundance is in creation. Oh my God.
God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do you understand how powerful this is? So if I'm, if I'm able to tap into the gates of God through thanksgiving, why wouldn't I be thanking God more? Because that's how I'm going to enter into the gates. And the gates got all type of provisional mantles and powers that I'm supposed to be moving in in this life as a kingdom citizen. So I have to step into these gates if the Father is going to give us this day. See, this day, I can't access this day without thanksgiving. Because this day don't come neutral or, or automatic. This gate has to be walked into by me with thanksgiving for the Father to give us this day with bread. Now watch this, saints. What did the Lord Jesus multiply? Five, uh, uh, five bread, two fish. So when the Bible say, give us this day, our daily bread. It was bread that the Lord Jesus multiplied. So your multiplication is really in a gate. That you can't access unless you sow. You got to sow the five loaves. You got to sow the two fish. You got to sow. You got to put something into the hands of Jesus. You got to sow and you got to give thanks. See, man, I knew this. I knew this coming up. That's why I did. I was sowing and praising. And then I had to start serving and submitting to unlock more seed. That's what I did. And it's not just for a season or a moment. This is a lifestyle. Let me, let me give you a secret, child of God. You're never going to stop working. But there are higher levels of work. Oh, my gosh. Listen, 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 listen. And the higher levels of work become easier and easier and easier and easier. But see, work is divine. It keeps your soul in the flow with your spirit. So if, I, if you ever stop working, your soul ain't going to have nothing pulling on it to move in the spirit. Saints, even your work challenges your soul to cling to the spirit. Because you meet a lot of people that's in the flesh. And you're, you're hidden in a system that's of the flesh. And God plants you there. Because while you're in a location where flesh rules, now your spirit man has to govern you. Your spirit man has a platform to function. Oh my God. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. You know the president name is prophetic. His last name is Trump. Because trumpets are sounding in heaven. We in a historical time right now. The reason why President Trump be acting the way he act because he be drunk. If you watch me, you have seen me act just like Trump. A uh, President Trump. <laughs> Before he did it. If you follow me for these last couple years, you'll see me act like that in zones. Because that's what God does when you have many enemies. 
That's what happens when you're a general in the spirit and you've been called to fulfill an end time assignment. God give you a different type of mouth, a different type of mind, a different type of reaction, a different type of vocabulary, and you talk a different type of word. And that's the privilege you'll receive from God. God be having President Trump drunk because President Trump is not like he was a born again believer all these years, like he was, uh, uh, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit. But the Lord picked him, and that's all that matters. When the Lord picked him, when the Lord picked you, he pits his spirit on you. But see, I understand President Trump, and I know President Trump probably don't, he, he don't understand what be happening to him. He just feel this overwhelming power to talk his talk. That's your nuts hang. Um, he just find this overwhelming power to talk his talk. They need to have me on the board. I explained to President Trump what's happening. Trumpets are sounding. Last day trumpets. Look what President Trump did. Signed a bill for 1.4 trillion. To preserve these American people that's up there fighting them. That's some Joseph stuff. The Lord helping them. Why you think that government shutdown happened? Because all this sin and nobody listening to God. Look what Trump... Look what President Trump just did. Just stop the government from shutting down. Just did the 1.4 trillion. You see that? There are angels, and I'm going to tell you something, President Trump angels have been dealing with Nancy Pelosi. Which is going to rise up when if God pit Anybody, anywhere, which is going to rise up? You see all them people that be rejoicing with this whole impeachment theory? They're on their way to hell. Saints, not everybody got the seal of God on their forehead. You see them people that be jumping on the bandwagon? If they don't repent, they're going to drop right in hell. You see them people that be jumping on and up there tossing, God is at work. Look what God doing. They dumb. They underneath the drunkenness of this Babylonian wine intoxicated with deception. They're on their way to hell. And, and saints, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes stuff arise up in the nation for people that are of the spirit and know where the direction of the spirit is to show you these people don't even know what direction the spirit is.
the wheat and the tear are going to grow together. I'm telling you, I'm happy I'm on this system of God. I ain't trading this for nothing. Saints, I don't get no food stamp. I'm not on none of that. I'm not, I'm not on none of that stuff. And I, I'm saying that to some of you all, don't get comfortable with that food stamps, baby, you going higher. Don't get comfortable and complacent. Don't make that your God because you coming up. Even if you on food stamp, fine. That's not your finale. Don't set your, and, and see, I, I'm gonna tell you this children. There's a spirit on governmental assistance. You know what it does? The spirit of budgets and limitation that stunts dreaming. When you on governmental assistance, the devil try to tell you this all you gonna make in a month now, this all you gonna have the next six months, and the devil try to carve it like that's your life. No, it's not. This ain't all I'ma have in those six months. Nah, you dummy. I'm underneath the abundance anointing. I'm going to abound with blessings. You ain't read the Bible, fool. Well, let me read it for you. I am abounding with blessings. You better decree in your atmosphere. Talk your, talk your, ah, talk it. Let me just say this. Don't let the devil out talk you. Talk back. You got, and, and don't get into no argument with the devil. You got the word. Talk your word. What you going to do? I will not worry about tomorrow what I shall eat, what I shall drink. For the father knows that I have needs of these things. And if he shall feed the raven that doesn't sow nor reap. And he will pick clothes on the lily that is here today and gone tomorrow. He sure going to clothe me and take care of me. Because the Bible said that I'm worth more than all of them put together. So I received the word of God concerning my life. That's what I had to do. Because... Don't think for one minute when I was sleeping in my car, the devil wasn't, wasn't uh, uh, double flood plucking with me. That's the, uh, the King LeBron James International uh, uh, Lakers um, version. The devil was flood plucking with me, and I didn't. I didn't let him flood pluck with me. You understand what I'm saying? I flood plucked him back. No homo, and that's why I did. No homo in Dallas Cowboys need Tony Romo. I was Dallas Cowboys, y'all like. I try to go to the Super Bowl, y'all up there trying to disappoint. What? What? One of the Dallas Cowboys sleeping with Jezebel. That's what happened. They, they put a curse on him. The Lord's Prayer being an entryway. For you to verbalize access to the gates. The grace. The glory and the gold. Imagine this.
Mark chapter 11, the Lord was talking about that if you have ought against anyone, forgive them that your father in heaven may forgive you. Now, what does it say in the Lord's prayer? Prayer, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those that have sinned against us. Forgiven those we have ought against. Why? So that we'll remove the hindrance power from the gates, the wealth gates, all of the gates of God's provision in abundance. That's how I remove Satan's power to stop manifestation from occurring. Imagine how in the Lord's Prayer and in Jesus' um, mentorship in Mark chapter 11, he was teaching the disciples how to not let anything in their soul stop manifestation. He was showing them how if the soul even contemplates things that's of unforgiveness, bitterness, and the soul is stuck in that, and the soul has not been free from a memory of the past or a thought process or a person, how it can hinder the flow of the supernatural. Because remember what the Lord said, and supernatural money can't move. The Lord said, if you shall say to the mountain, you're saying to the mountain, but if your soul has not walked in, forgive those you have ought against, your words bouncing back to you. And it's returning to you void. When it's supposed to return to you victorious. Imagine this. If the, if the word returned back to you void because something in your soul, that means that you're going to be in bankruptcy. It's just like a void check. You try to use a void check, the transaction backfires. You can't make the exchange because the check is void. Now, here's what I'm hearing the Holy Ghost say. The Holy Ghost said, I was teaching them how to avoid what will create the void in their spiritual account. So remember when the Lord Jesus said, beware, he told the disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. He's teaching them how to avoid. Don't sin lest the worst thing come upon you. He's teaching them how to avoid. Go in peace and sin no more. He's teaching her how to avoid. Now, all in the Lord's Prayer, the reason why it's called the Lord's Prayer, because this is what Lords say. No, no, I'm not talking about just the Lord Jesus. See, once you pray in that Lord's Prayer, it is, it is uh, evidence that you're actually a Lord in the spirit realm. It's called the Lord's Prayer because you praying as a Lord over your region with this prayer. Wow. Saints, this is so powerful. 
Are you, are you catching this? It's called the Lord's Prayer because now when you pray in this prayer, it's, it's proof you showing the devil you activating your lordship. Saints did so glorious because the Lord's Prayer was not just the Lord teaching them how to pray. He was teaching them how to function as a Lord. Saints, are you catching this? Are you catching this? Are you seeing this? He teaching them how to function as a Lord. So it's the Lord's prayer. It was a mentorship manual. This how you govern your reason. Got on the track. You gotta forgive. You gotta be forgiven. You gotta ask the Lord to give us this day. Cause this day is not accessible to the billion people on the earth. This day is hidden. It's an impartation. Shall overtake him that obeys 